Well, we're off for a little walk. Uh, Saturday morning, we need to get some shopping. Um, so we're just walking into town and we're actually going to go and visit the recommended baker for some pies for lunch. So we'll take you for a little look at the shop. Uh, we've got a, found a circular walk, so we're walking along the towpath this way as far as we can, just into town, get some supermarket shopping, and then we'll be on the Middlewood Way. Yeah. Um, and we'll walk back that way. Nice little, what, two mile circular oh, walk? Probably about three and a half. Is it? Maybe four. Just to get our um, essential shopping. Of course, pies are essential. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and hopefully, I'm keeping my fingers crossed that I might be able to get some bread flour from the baker because I can't get bread flour anywhere and I have known in the past some bakers will sell it to you. Look. Oh, look. Get him running. There is some confusion with our American friends about pies. <laughs> It seems consensus in America is that uh, pies can only be filled with fruit. But uh, over here, a pie can be filled with fruit and often is, as in apple pie. But uh, we love a meat pie with gravy. So you can have steak and kidney pie, chicken and mushroom pie. Uh, you can have fish pies. But uh, you can also have vegetarian pies. You can have cheese and onion. Uh, any others, Fran? Well, it's endless, isn't it? Yeah. It's sweet potato seems to be the thing, but no, you're not a sweet, sweet potato, potato, aren't you? But uh, we make a leek and mushroom and cheese pie. Oh, yeah, that's lovely. Um, although we don't put cheese in it, but we have a leek and mushroom pie. There's also a, a northern pie a few people have told us about, which is a potato and... Potato and meat pie, so like no, mince meat, oh. isn't it? Oh, I don't know. There's Cornish pasties, it's all sorts, but generally we prefer the savoury pies, especially the men. Men, it's a pub with a pie and a pint. It's the done thing, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm quite partial too. Right. Uh, we'll see what this shop has to offer. Cyclists Doggies, approaching. Come on. <laughs> hey. Come here. Some more coming from behind. Jess, come here. Stay. 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 Thank you. <laughs> idiot. As you can see, the towpath along here is quite narrow, which is why we had to move along to pick and choose our mooring spot because by the time you've got cyclists going past, there's, there's no way you can safely be moored. No, and Somewhere also like you, there's no way you can moor along here. It's just, uh, this is no good. So you have to keep going until you can just see the boat at the other side of the bridge. You have to keep going until you can find somewhere suitable to moor, which we have and we like it. It's good. <laughs> This is cow parsley or Queen Anne's lace, Latin name Anthriscus sylvestris. It's my favourite plant, uh, wild plant anyway at least, and uh, it's just gorgeous. Hopefully, Canal and River Trust won't come and strim it all down like they often do. Do you know why it's called Queen Anne's lace? Pray tell. <laughs> because back, I don't know which Queen Anne it was. How many the have we Queen had? Anne, yeah. We had one. I think so. I'm not very good at real history, but Queen Anne, which was right way, way back, um, there was a parade and the peasants were weaving or making lace for her. And it was this time of year and uh, it was supposed to resemble this flower, the delicate um, lace making. So that's why they called it Queen Anne's lace. So there you go. Oh, you heard <laughs> Useless it here first. information. <laughs> The 
This is where our towpath walk ends. It's blocked off by the Canal and River Trust who are doing lining works on the embankments ahead. So we have to uh, go into town now via the road above. And we tried to moor in behind that boat a few days ago when we came through Bollington last week but we just could not get the boat into the edge. Our draft on the boat is quite deep. Is she not behaving? What are you doing, Jess? Come on then, sit. Sit. Good girl. Good girl. Mummy, put your lead on. Jess always does what Daddy says, and she hates having her lead put on. Watch this. Uh -huh, she's a good one. Just about to walk under the canal. A beautiful aqueduct. And I think lockdown's beginning to fray. The traffic on this road is so busy. What you got? Bread flour. Yeah. Two lots of their own bread flour. It's not a pie, brilliant. is it? I've got a baked quill tart. But the cheese and onion pies are going to be about 20 minutes. They're in the oven. They're the only vegetarian pies. Uh, well, we can't justify hanging around. No, we We've got to go. We'll have to make do with that. Oh, so, let's move big on. counter full of lovely looking pies, but. No veggies. That's where the old railway track was, running between, I guess, Macclesfield and Manchester. And there's a nice little path up here to be followed. What's cooking, friend? Well, nothing's cooking, it's raw. <laughs> So I've been and picked, it's wilted a little bit now. This plant is called Jack by the Hedge or Garlic Mustard. Um, it's quite easy to identify, it's got these leaves, but don't take my word for it. You need to look up in books and find out exactly what it is. And the leaves, um, fun enough, taste of garlic and mustard. So I'm gonna have a go. I've not done this before, I'm making some pesto with this. Um, and we're gonna have it on some pasta if it works. So I've picked these younger leaves, not the great big ones, I've picked um, about a cupful of these young leaves and just chopped them up in a bowl. They've been washed off a little bit and dried. So they're going in with a quarter of a cup of walnuts. You can use pine nuts, but I don't have any. So it's just chopped walnuts, 
they're all going in. Two cloves of cloves. <laughs> <laughs> Two cloves of garlic, just roughly top chopped. It's all going to be blended. And um, you should also, according to the recipes, use Parmesan cheese, but we don't use cheese if we can help it, if we can avoid it. And we've recently discovered um, this stuff called nutritional yeast, um, which looks a bit odd, but it adds a real cheesy flavour to anything vegan or vegetarian that you haven't got cheese for. It's not strong cheese so flavour though, is it? It's, just it's not. Much. It takes a little bit of getting used to it, but we quite like it. So instead of, it should be a quarter of a cup, I'm going to put that much nutritional yeast in. Otherwise known as nooch. Nooch, the for youth those call that, it. <laughs> the youth. <laughs> and um, I'm just going to give it a little stir together in here. Ideally, this goes in a proper blender or a food processor now, which is something that we don't have. So we'll just give it a go. The last ingredient is a quarter of a cup of olive oil. And this needs to be just drizzled in apparently but I'm going to put some in just to start it off because I don't think this is going to blend otherwise. All I've got is this little hand blender. Um, so fingers crossed, let's see what happens. <laughs> Um, it used all the oil, it wasn't a problem to do, so... Does it taste like pesto though, know. that's the point. let's we'll see. Oh. Let's have a go. That is really good. What do you oh, think? Yeah. That is really tasty. That's really tasty. I'm going to just, final touch on that, I'm going to put a little bit of lemon. It's quite um, a heavy flavour, it's quite dense dense flavour what's the strong. word cloying <laughs> it's full of flavour <laughs> so I think I'm going to just add a little bit of lemon juice to it just to freshen it up a bit and the other thing I might have done differently if we had wild garlic growing around I would have added um, some wild garlic instead of the garlic cloves but there's none immediately close to the boat at the moment so what do you think Fran? Well, about to taste it, we've also got our first meal of homegrown salad. Although we've had some leaves in sandwiches, that's our first meal of salad. Obviously, only the leaves, but anyway. Oh. Good. Mm. Oh. That is really good. <laughs> really good well we're back on roof painting duties after a week with uh, rainy spells and uh, my hay fever keeping me inside for three days on end so what we're doing is just preparing the uh, surface as best we can so we use this to scrape off the flaky areas around the rust and then Give it a good sanding down and if that's not good enough we'll get the drill onto it just to uh, smooth it right out. Then we give the roof a good clean over and then the areas that are exposed that are rusty we treat with this stuff. A thin layer of fur tan destroys rust and protects steel apparently. Having fun Fran? Wonderful! We it's love right it. actually, it's just, we, we hesitate to come out but once you get started it's perfect weather for it and we really, well, I can't say we don't mind, not after what I made on the comment I made on the last video about not missing pubs, <laughs> I, can't, <laughs> I can't say we don't mind it but it's not that bad, it's a lovely day, just get on with it for a couple of hours, so yeah, it's not weaving though is it? No, so we won't be painting the roof in this bright light it's a bit uh, of a killer on the eyes so we'll wait till the sun's going down or early morning to give it a 
coats. We're going to put three coats of paint on after using primer on the exposed areas and undercoat and then three coats of top coat. So it's going to take us a, a good three days to finish off but uh, it's going to look great. So our first primer on the roof and letting that dry for a few hours before putting the second coat on. I'm just going to reverse behind us and go to the uh, water point at the boatyard further behind, it's about a mile away. So uh, better straighten up first, eh? Oops. This boat never wants to go in the direction you want it to when it's reversing. Always wants to swing the back end, the opposite way to which you want to go. But we're getting there. We've travelled to get our um, water and top up with diesel at Bollington Wharf. And look what I see now. Because somebody hit the bridge <laughs> twice, it looks like we're getting a new chimney. Double skin. Double skin, of course. He looks like a happy man. <laughs> <laughs> 